In this video, we will discuss about diabetes mellitus. Diabetes mellitus, unfortunately, over 19 million adults in Pakistan are estimated to be living with diabetes. So, we will discuss what is diabetes mellitus. Diabetes, it is a metabolic disorder which is characterized by hyperglycemia resulting from imbalance between insulin production and cellular response to insulin. So, in diabetic patients, they have high level of blood glucose. The vessels that carries blood has high content of glucose. And what are the reasons behind the high level of glucose? There are possibly two reasons. Either the insulin which is produced is in insufficient amount or the cells are resistant to the insulin. Now, basically what is this insulin? Our cell has a gate and you know that every gate has a key to open to unlock it and insulin is a hormone which unlock this gate and make a pathway for the entry of glucose from vessels into the cells a person with uncontrolled diabetes is unable to transport glucose into the cell as a result the body cells starved and break down fats and proteins to fulfill the cellular requirements to determine whether the patient has a diabetes or he is not having a diabetes we should know the diabetic chart so now i'll tell you the normal range the hyperglycemic range and the impaired glucose range here we will discuss different glucose levels like normal then impaired glucose then diabetic i have drawn three classes the normal class the impaired glucose class and the diabetic class next we will discuss what are their values during fasting after eating and two to three hours after eating normally when you eat anything when you consume any food that food is broken down into a normal quantity and is evenly distributed in your bodies and is provided to your cells to accomplish to fulfill the cellular requirement so normally when you're fasting your blood glucose level would be between 80 to 100 so in normal individual the fasting level is 80 to 100 and after eating let's suppose you have taken your meal so after eating the glucose level will be between 170 to 200 this range is for those people who are normal and after two to three hours of eating it would be between 120 to 140 see you could see the difference before eating when you have nothing it's between 80 to 100 and after eating after having your meal it's between 170 to 200 and after two to three hours of eating it's normal again 120 to 140 this case is for those who are normal who are not classified as a diabetic now impaired glucose this is a second class these are those individuals who have high level of glucose but that doesn't mean that the that the person is having diabetes but this is a warning sign that this per uh, this person is going to be diabetic in future how let's see the fasting value for impaired glucose patient would be 101 to 125 the individuals who have impaired glucose level when they have nothing when they have when they haven't taken their meal their glucose would be between 101 to 125 and after eating let's suppose they have had their meal and after eating their glucose would be 190 to 230 and after two to three hours of eating it would be 140 to 160 this value is higher than this value so this is an alarm that the pay, that the person is having a bit high glucose level and if this person continues to have a high glucose level this would lead to diabetes so now let's discuss about diabetic patient diabetic patient fasting on the fasting scale they have a blood glucose which is higher than 126 so when they when you will check their blood glucose level it would be greater than 126 uh, on fasting scale when they have nothing when they haven't had any meal and after eating their blood glucose level would be between 220 to 300 and after two to three hours of eating it would be greater than 200 
So see, you can see the difference in the normal individual. The fasting value was between 80 to 100. And those patients who are having high level of glucose because they are continuously consuming sweet substances as any substance that has carbs in it continuously they are having fasting value between 101 to 125 and those patients who are diabetic they have blood glucose level which is greater than 126 in on a fasting scale after eating the normal individual has a blood glucose level which is 170 to 200 which is obviously when you will eat anything your blood glucose level would be high which is 170 to 200 in those patients who have impaired glucose their blood glucose level between 190 to 230 and in diabetic patient their blood glucose level will be between 220 to 300 after eating and after two to three hours of eating a normal individual the glucose will return back to normal in those patients who have impaired glucose level, their glucose will range between 140 to 160. And those patients who are diabetic, their blood glucose level would be greater than 200. So this is a very important chart to determine whether you are diabetic, whether you are normal or whether you are at risk of developing diabetes. Classification of diabetes. Since we have discussed that diabetes is a combination of a metabolic disorder which is characterized by hyperglycemia resulting from imbalance between insulin production and cellular response to insulin. So now we will discuss about its classification. There are major four types. Number one, pre-diabetes. Number two, type 1 diabetes mellitus. Number three, type 2 diabetes mellitus and number 4 gestational diabetes now what is actually this pre-diabetes pre-diabetes is a diagnostic term which is used when the blood glucose level is elevated but it has not crossed the threshold criteria it means that this person is continuously having something which is sweet which has high content of carbs and it is increasing its blood glucose level and this person is at a risk of developing type 2 diabetes. Now we will discuss in detail about these different types. But before that we should know that pre-diabetes, it is a condition in which you have a high glucose level. But these are, uh, these are not individuals who are diabetic. But these are those individuals who are at high risk of developing diabetes in future if they don't control their diabetes. And uh, detection of predictable state is more common in people at a risk for type 2 diabetes. If pre-diabetes is detected, what you can do to resolve it? You can simply do your lifestyle modification. You can do, you can control your diet, exercise and weight loss. So if you are having continuously high level of glucose in your blood, uh, as I have discussed earlier, that those patients who are who has an impaired of glucose level, their fasting blood glucose level is between 101 to 125 and after eating it's 190 to 230 and after 2 to 3 hours of eating it is 140 to 160 and if you are getting these readings on your scale what you have to do to control the risk for developing diabetes is simply by doing your lifestyle modification by controlling your diet by doing exercise and by your weight reduction if you will control these factors you can simply get a normal glucose level so this won't lead to type 2 diabetes so this is a way these individuals are at high risk for developing diabetes so each one of us who are getting high blood glucose level they should take it serious they have to do simple lifestyle modification and by these lifestyle modification they can easily bring back their diabetes their blood glucose level to the normal values so we have discussed that pre-diabetes is a condition in which the patient has a persistent high level of blood glucose but it has not crossed the threshold criteria to be called as a diabetic patient. So by doing simple lifestyle modification we can easily get a normal blood glucose level. Now we will discuss the difference between type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes, what is type 1 diabetes? We have heard people saying that I am having type 1 diabetes. Some says that I am having type 2 diabetes. So it is very really important to distinguish between these two main classification of diabetes. So what is type 1 diabetes? Type 1 diabetes. We all know that our pancreas have islets of Langerhans. They have a 
beta cells these beta cells are responsible for production of insulin and we have discussed that insulin is a hormone it's like a key to unlock a gate for a cell insulin is basically a hormone it helps the entry of glucose from the vessels into the cells it uh, open these gates and with the help of this glucose from our blood enters into the cell so insulin is a very important key here in type 1 diabetes these beta cells are destroyed so obviously if you have a destroyed beta cell there will be no insulin production so basically in type 1 diabetes the beta cells which are responsible for insulin production they are destroyed there are number of factors why these are destroyed it could be due to the immunological factors due to the autoimmune disease that your own body destroys these beta cells and the quantity of insulin production decreases and sometimes it is not even produced so obviously if you don't have insulin the glucose from your blood won't travel inside the cell and it will remain in the vessels as a result what will happen that these cells will starve of energy they want if they won't get in glucose they will starve of energy and they will begin to break down fats and protein content it will give signal to the brain that i'm that i'm not receiving enough amount of energy to perform my activities so obviously in an alternate pathway it will begin to break down fats and protein as a result the fats which have which has which will convert into fatty acids and these fatty acids in liver will form ketone bodies and these ketone bodies will cause the acidosis in your body we have discussed that type 1 diabetes in type 1 diabetes the beta cells are destroyed and there is no insulin production no insulin production and high blood glucose level in your vessels so we have discussed that in type 1 diabetes the beta cells are destroyed beta cells are destroyed as a result we have no insulin now what is type 2 diabetes type 2 diabetes is basically a type in which the beta cells in your pancreas they are working normally and the insulin production is normal or it could be below normal so we can say that we have sufficient amount of insulin then why we call it diabetes we call it diabetes because the insulin this in type 2 diabetes is produced the cell does not respond to this insulin it will consider it a stranger as a result it won't allow the insulin to open the gate for glucose hence it will keep the uh, cells gate closed as a result the vessel will keep having will have a persistent high level of glucose and insulin uh, will not work here and glucose will not enters into the cell as a result the cell will give message to the brain and brain will re release glucagon this glucagon will send message to the liver that the cell is starving of energy please supply energy to the cell and this liver will convert glycogen which is a stored form of glucose back into the glucose and this glucose will again travel into the vessels and this glucose will again not get any entry into the cell as a result the vessels will continuously have a high level of blood glucose so in type 2 diabetes we have insulin production but cells are resistant to this insulin as a result of which we have a persistent high level of glucose in our vessels so we uh, so now let's do a comparison of type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes type 1 type 2 let's write the features and discuss in detail the difference between these two types first let's discuss the onset type 1 diabetes are sudden in onset whereas type 2 diabetes are gradual in onset age 
predictable age type 1 diabetes is mostly seen in children whereas type 2 diabetes is mostly seen in adults due to which we we have often seen people saying it insulin dependent insulin dependent this is also called insulin dependent and juvenile onset diabetes mellitus and this is commonly called as non insulin dependent diabetes now let's see the body habits those patient who have type 1 diabetes they have thin and normal body whereas those patient who have type 2 diabetes they are obese ketoacidosis ketoacidosis are more are more common in are present in type 1 diabetes whereas in type 2 diabetes it is rare and we have discussed earlier that how these ketone bodies are produced when you are in type 1 diabetes we have discussed that uh, they do not have insulin and when they don't have insulin the cell would obviously need energy to fulfill its requirement it will begin to then break down fats content and these fats will convert into fatty acids and these fatty acids are converted into ketone bodies in liver and these ketone bodies will lead to diabetic ketoacidosis a very serious complication so this condition is more common in type 1 diabetes whereas in type 2 diabetes it is rare autoantibodies are present in type 1 diabetes and these are absent in type 2 diabetes because we have discussed that beta cells are destroyed in type 1 diabetes and these are mostly destroyed due to the own body whereas in type 2 diabetes beta cells are normal but there are cellular resistance to insulin so that's why auto antibodies are present mostly in type 1 diabetes where they are whereas they are absent in type 2 diabetes endogenous insulin this insulin that we have discussed due to the destruction of beta cells are low are absent in type 1 diabetes because the beta cells are normal in type 2 diabetes insulin production is normal concordance in identical twins concordance is the liability of your identical twin of having diabetes in type 1 diabetes if you are having a twin it is likely 50% chances that that other twin would also have type 1 diabetes whereas in type 2 diabetes your identical twin will have 90% chances that he will also develop diabetes prevalence rate it is 10% prevalent and it is 90% prevalent in our society so now let's get a recap we have discussed the difference between type 1 and type 2 diabetes we have di discussed the different features through which we have compared these two diabetes onset type 1 are sudden in onset whereas in type 2 diabetes it is gradual in onset age it is most commonly seen in children due to which it is called juvenile onset it is most commonly seen in adults body habits those who are having type 1 diabetes they have thin body a normal body whereas those patient who are having type 2 diabetes they are obese they are heavy in weight ketoacidosis is more common in type 1 diabetes it is rare in type 2 diabetes auto antibodies are present in type 1 diabetes whereas it is absent in type 2 diabetes endogenous insulin which mean uh, the presence of insulin inside your body is low i absent in type 1 diabetes whereas it is normal in type 2 diabetes concordance in identical twin which is 50% in type 1 diabetes and 90% in type 2 diabetes then we have discussed the prevalence rate it is 10% prevalent and type 2 diabetes is most common in prevalence which is 90% in its rate so we have discussed pre diabetes which are those people who are at high risk for developing diabetes because of high level of blood glucose continuously in their blood but they are not yet classified as diabetic patient type 1 we have discussed those patient who have destroyed beta cells and they have no insulin production and then we have discussed about type 2 diabetes these are those patient who have um, sufficient amount of insulin in their blood but the cells they are resistant to insulin next gestational diabetes this this is a diabetes which is seen in pregnant women during second and third trimester 
and this is due to the hormonal influences and when the baby is delivered and after few days this ceases back to the normal so we have discussed the major two types type 1 and type 2 signs and symptoms we have discussed about diabetes that it is a metabolic disorder which is characterized by hyperglycemia due to imbalance between imbalance between insulin production or cellular resistance to insulin now how will you identify that the patient is having a diabetes there are basic three symptoms through which you can identify that the patient is developing diabetes which is number one polyuria which is excessive urination you would see the patient of diabetes that they are going to the toilet again and again they are having excessive urination number two polydipsia which is excessive thrust number three polyphagia which is excessive hunger these are the three important P's which are related to the sign and symptom of diabetes mellitus other associated symptoms could be blurred vision fatigue skin infection complications of diabetes complications are categorized into acute complications and chronic complications Acute are the most important and most dangerous, although they all are life-threatening conditions that demand immediate recognition and treatment. In acute complications, we have three most important complications, which includes diabetic ketoacidosis (DK), number two, hyperosmolar hyperglycemic state, number third is hypoglycemia. Let's discuss about DK. The DK is most common in those who have type 1 diabetes and we have discussed that in type 1 diabetes there is no insulin production why because your beta cells are destroyed as a result your vessel will have a high blood glucose level and your cell will not get any glucose content and it will starve of energy and what it will do to fulfill its energy requirement it will begin to break down fat and proteins and we know that these fats are converted into fatty acids and these fatty acids in liver is converted into ketone bodies so, in DK patient, they have presence of ketone bodies, metabolic acidosis, and hyperglycemia. These are the pathogenesis of DK. Presence of ketone bodies, metabolic acidosis, and hyperglycemia. Now, what will it cause? Due to the hyperglycemia, the hyperosmolality of this blood will raise. Due to the presence of persistent high level of glucose, it will give message to the surrounding cells please dilute me and decrease my sugar content it will exert water content from the surrounding cell and all the water content from the surrounding cell will move into the vessels to dilute this hyper osmolalic condition of vessel the entry of water from the surrounding cells into this vessels will cause pseudo hyponatremia when this blood flow will travel to the kidneys the excessive sugar will be passed out in the form of urination electrolytes will be removed from the body causing the patient dehydration so associated signs and symptoms would be excessive urination along with electrolyte imbalance and dehydration so in DK we have discussed the complications the pathogenesis in which we discussed about diuresis dehydration fluid and electrolyte imbalance pseudo hyponatremia signs and symptoms include fruity smell due to keto acid hypotension tachycardia 
and deep rapid breathing which is called Cosmos respirations. So what is the treatment? The goal is treating the DKR to improve the circulatory volume and tissue perfusion, decrease blood glucose level and correct the metabolic acidosis and correct electrolyte imbalance. So we can say that the treatment includes administration of insulin, intravenous fluid and electrolyte replacement. As we have discussed that DK is common in those patients who are having type 1. So what is hyper or smaller hyperglycemic state? Hyper or smaller hyperglycemic state we could, which we can also call HHS is characterized by hyperglycemia. In this condition also we have hyperglycemia which is characterized by hyperosmolarity with dehydration but there is no ketone bodies. There is depression of sensorium. HSAs occur frequently in people with type 2 diabetes. The clinical manifestation and treatment would be the most prominent manifestation of HHS is weakness, dehydration, polyuria and neurological alteration and excessive thrust. Neurological alteration it will increase hemiparesis seizures and coma what would be now the treatment of hhs it will include the care uh, it will include the correction of dehydration so in treatment we what would we do correction of dehydration dehydration correction of hyperglycemia and electrolyte correction of electrolyte imbalance so basically in DK we have presence of ketone bodies whereas in hyper or smaller hyperglycemic state it is most common in those patients who have type 2 diabetes but there is no presence of ketone bodies. They although they have hyperglycemia they have dehydration excessive urination but there is no there is no presence of ketone bodies. They, they, they will have depression of sensorium. They will have neurological alteration which includes hemiparesis, seizures and coma. And in treatment, we will do the correction of dehydration, correction of hyperglycemia and the correction of electrolyte imbalance. Next, what is hypoglycemia? The third and the most important chronic complication of acute diabetes mellitus. It will, what is basically hypoglycemia? Hypoglycemia is when the, your blood glucose concentration is less than 70 mg per deciliter. So when your blood glucose level is less than 70 it could be with or without symptom and it occur most commonly in those patients who have given insulin injection. They will experience low level of glucose. So what are the signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia? It will include, include headache. So if you are having low blood glucose level you will probably have headache. Difficulty in problem solving. Disturb or altered behavior. Coma. Seizures. Anxiety. Tachycardia. Sweating. Skin would be cool and clammy. So obviously if any person is having low blood glucose level, what would you do? You will give glucose content to the person. Diabetic complication. Now we will discuss the diabetic complications related to counter regulatory mechanism there are two most important effects which are mostly studied as a result of a complication which is related to counter regulatory mechanism the first is the somoga effect
The second is down phenomena. The Somogai effect is during, it was introduced by Dr. Michel Somogai in 1930 by Dr. Michael Somogai in 1930. So what does this phenomena say? What does this effect say is basically that the presence of cyclic pattern of early morning hyperglycemia which is due to the insulin induced hypoglycemia occurring during the previous evening so this effect basically says that you give insulin to the person and insulin to the person in let's suppose yesterday evening and as a result of this insulin the patient will have hypoglycemia and the next early morning when you will check the blood glucose level it will have hyperglycemia as a result of insulin induced hypoglycemia this is known as the somogai effect what is down phenomena in down phenomena there will be also a hyperglycemia but this was this is not related to the hype insulin induced hypoglycemia but this hyperglycemia is due to the result of glucagon and this glucagon is normally released early in morning in our body to prepare our body for the activities of daily. So in those patients who have hyperglycemia which is not in related to insulin induced hypoglycemia this is known as the down phenomena. Whereas in Somogai effect we have studied that those patients are given insulin in the evening and that insulin will cause hypoglycemia and when we will check the blood glucose level in the next early morning they will have hyperglycemia and this hyperglycemia is due to the insulin induced hypoglycemia in the evening as a result they will have a counter effect in the early morning which is hyperglycemia whereas in down phenomena we studied the presence of hyperglycemia high blood glucose level which is not related to the insulin effect but this is related to the glucagon effect early we have discussed the acute complications in acute complications, we have discussed DK, diabetic ketoacidosis, hyperosmolar hyperglycemic state, and hypoglycemia. Now, what comes in the chronic complications? In chronic complication, the chronic complication of diabetes will include the microvasculature. In microvasculature, if you discuss, it includes number one, neuropathy, number two, nephropathy, Number 3, retinopathy and number 4, disorder of GI which means that if the person continues to have a persistent level of diabetes, high blood glucose level, on their microvasculature they will begin to develop neuropathy, their nerves will begin to degenerate. As a result they will not experience any sort of a pain or any discomfort they will have injuries continuously and that injuries will lead to ulcers and that ulcer will lead to the uh, formation of diabetic foot which is very chronic complication nephropathy their kidney because of persistent level of glucose which is then traveled to the kidneys for filtration and those kidneys will be affected and those kidneys will eventually destroyed with passage of time so they will develop nephropathies their nephrons will de destroy with the passage of time retinopathy the retina in the eye because of the high blood glucose level will begin to destroy and as a result they will have blurred vision they will have difficulty in seeing disorder of GI they will have eventually a difficulty and disorder of G gastrointestinal mortality this was related to the microvascular uh, complication and if we discuss the macrovascular co complication macrovascular it will include coronary artery disease you know that coronaries these are the arteries which supply your heart and if you have high level of glucose these arteries lumen will gradually become narrow and when the lumen is narrowed the level of blood supply to the heart will be interrupted with the passage of time so it will lead to the coronary artery disease and definitely will lead to the heart disease and heart disorder with the passage of time leading to myocardial infarction which is a very serious condition cerebral vascular disease when the sugar is deposited in the vessels which are leading and supplying to the brain 
this will affect your brain functioning so you will have cerebral vascular disease and next and not least peripheral vascular disease and foot ulcers